Alright, hi everyone. This is a quick video to let you know that I've updated the community material pack for Blender. It's now on version 3. And if you don't know what this is, it's basically a collection of completely free and CC0 materials for you to download and use for your artwork. What does CC0 mean? It means you can use it for absolutely anything. So that's commercial, non-commercial projects. You can also redistribute them however, wherever, whenever you like. So it's just like a gift back to the community. And I'm not the only one that's contributed materials to this. Other members of the Blender community and specifically my Discord community have also been contributing some of these materials. So that's available to get for free on Gumroad and $1 on Blender Market. But anyway, let's take a look at what's new. We've got an interesting variety of new stuff. We've got like clay, meat, carbon fiber, a CRT screen like shader, snow, and I've thrown in a new kind of plastic like material. Also, most of the old materials have also been packaged up in a neater way inside of their actual node trees to kind of contain them inside of node groups now. Before we take a look at a visual demonstration, I need to give a massive thanks to Wilson Digital Design because he's been helping me massively with preparing the content, bringing it in from the community and getting it ready for me to actually integrate into the project. All right, so let's play around. So I'm here in my new startup file. This may look a bit different than my regular startup file, which I know a lot of you have downloaded. That's another thing. I've been making some improvements to this and I will share that in the future as well. So yeah, this is my startup file and I've got my asset library down here. Let me just close the uh, world nodes. And I've organized this in a way which I feel comfortable with. But if I expand my materials category, I've got the community section. So these are all of the materials which are available in the community pack. Now, one of the interesting things about this pack is that so far, none of the materials are image based. They're all procedural. And there's a reason for this. It's mostly to keep the files size of the blend file down. And because all of the materials have been marked as assets, it means you can take the blend file, put it into your own asset library folder and have it automatically appear and update in your asset library here. So it's easy to move around and drag and drop the content where you want. Now, if you've seen this project before, you're probably familiar with all the different types of materials we have. So the first of the new materials I'm going to show you is clay by Mel. And I'll try and put on the screen like any kind of links or social things I can when I'm mentioning the people which have contributed. Now the clay, because clay is like a more organic type of surface, would be great for putting on top of your sculpts. So let me grab Suzanne, smooth it, scale it down a bit, and then apply the clay object. Here you go. So you can see Suzanne is now made of clay. We can rotate around. You see that there's some distortion, some displacement. Let me uh, smooth the faces as well. And like I said, because it's all procedural, you can modify the values right here. You can change the colors to whatever you want. You can change like the discoloration, the blots, the crags, like absolutely any aspect of this that you want to. So let's say that you were getting into sculpting. It doesn't have to be sculpting, but just for the sake of a demonstration. And you wanted to present your model in a very nice way. You don't have to worry about creating some kind of interesting procedural material. You can just slap the clay on and I think you end up with a pretty nice render you can share with people. Now the interesting thing about this one, like I mentioned, is there is some displacement going on and you can adjust that with the displacement scale and amount values down here. So the scale basically gives us the frequency of the displacement and the amount gives us how strong it is. So that's also interesting for adding a bit of extra detail once you've finished with your sculpt object and you want to present it, it gives it a bit more of like a handmade look. Now I should also say that these materials will look different in Cycles and Eevee. They're mostly consistent, right? But it's just worth taking a little look because you can see that in Eevee, the displacement won't really be properly represented. It will only be more of a surface effect which is fine, but it's just the nature of these different engines. So just generally as a rule of thumb, everything is better seen in cycles. This is especially true for some of the volumetric materials we have. So for example, if I make a UV sphere, shade smooth, scale it down and apply the marble material, then because this one has lots of volumetric data inside of it, it's only really going to be represented properly in cycles because Eevee's volumetric system is still kind of lackluster, as you can see here, like it's trying to resolve it within a cubic bounding box and it's just not really making much sense. Anyway, the next material we have is a little bit gross. It's a meat shader from Donna Designs. So if you've ever wanted to make your Super Meat Boy cubic fan art, then uh, you can do that now. Did anyone else play that game? Is that what it was called? Super Meat Boy? Yeah, I like that one. But anyway, yeah, so there's a meat shader here in case you want to make any uncooked steaks or meat like objects. Again, you know, there's different values here for the color, so maybe we can make it a bit more alien. It's completely up to you. It's all procedural. And again, there is actually some displacement data on this as well. So is this like, is this blasphemous? Like what I'm about to do? Let's, uh, ooh, okay. Let's displace Suzanne. Meaty Suzanne. That's kind of gross. Ugh. All right. That I feel like this should be illegal. Anyway, yeah, so there's a meat shader that's available for you to use. Thank you very much, Donna. Now let's take a look at carbon fiber. Oh, that's a very cool material. I bet like, all the car fans out there are going wild right now. So this one's contributed by Slink. And again, procedural, we can increase the scale. And I feel like that's something that's quite important on carbon fiber. You want to have a bit of a small scale going. And you can also, of course, change the colors as well. So you can get as creative as you like. This is quite cool. I love the brush effect on like the carbon pattern there. You can, of 
course also change the vector coordinates as well so we can do object although this one is more intended for uv that's why it makes more sense on every surface here but you know if you have experience with shader nodes and you know how these coordinates work then you can apply any coordinate you like as the input so for example here we go camera and it's basically going to stick to the camera position there so it depends on what kind of effects you want let's take a look at the carbon fiber on suzanne as well that looks quite cool. Actually, I like the lighting reflecting off of that. Hell yeah. Much more uh, sensible than the meat, I would say. I think Carbon Fiber Suzanne has a much better future ahead of her. Okay, the next material is really, really cool. So you're going to want to see this. This is the CRT material. Now, it looks kind of weird and generated texture on first glance. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the input texture. So the point of this shader is to recreate CRT screens. Now, I'm not an expert about this. So if you see any inconsistencies or if there's any technicalities you want to comment about saying that's not a CRT screen screen then throw them at slink not me okay sorry slink but basically if you provide an input texture so it can be anything you like probably also a movie file which i haven't actually tried yet but maybe i should then it will represent this on the surface and if you take a look at the crt node group then we have the more sensible controls here like scale so for example when you overlay the image on this surface if you want to make it so that those individual color points are harder to see you can increase the scale so maybe something like 2000 and then they'll become much smaller. But you can still see them upon zooming in around the surface. The reason why there was a noise texture here plugged in by default was just because it's a procedural demonstration showing that you can represent generated data as well as regular image textures. So to demonstrate this properly, let me add an image texture node. And then we can find stuff in here to represent on our CRT screen. Now I haven't actually tried this yet, but I figure I might as well show you what happens if we plug in a movie texture. And I'm also Oh wait, that does look like it's working. I'm also going to want to take the UV coordinate, I believe. Okay, oh god, look, there's my face. <laughs> so frames, I don't know how many there are, but let me just put in 300. This is very, very flattering. Let me uh, auto refresh. Oh yes, there we go. So look, as I move the timeline, it's going to update the frame on the screen. And if we zoom in, then you can see that it's represented by these color pixels here. Look at my lovely face there. So it's a really cool effect. Basically, if you wanted to create screens and have something distributed on them, then this is a really, really good shader to use. So you've got to thank Slink for making this one. You can, of course, adjust the brightness of the screen as well. This is quite funny. Let me just, uh, there we go. So yeah, you can adjust the brightness to make it brighter, so more emissive and darker as well. And if I'm correct, this also reacts to uh, other objects in the scene. So if I hide the light catcher and uh, make a cube here, just kind of have it hover like around the screen and then let's increase the brightness of this. Here you go. So you can see how the light is bouncing off the other objects. So it's proper emission. So this means that you can pretty well simulate a CRT screen and you can also adjust the surface roughness as well if you want it to be more or less reflective. So uh, maybe I should get rid of my big face now and we'll uh, move on to the next material but before we do one thing i really like about this as well is that once you've got the scale really high for those points of color you can see these very traditional effects here but like the colors kind of banding around the edges i really like that so i'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy this shader next up we have snow from charon so if i take our sphere and apply snow to it now obviously snow is very bright and we're in a very bright scene let me set this up properly there we go so I've got a sphere with a subdivision service modifier on it. I've made it adaptive as well. And you can see how it's trying to generate snow here. It takes a little while to resolve because there's a fair amount of kind of subsurface scattering going on. But the snow being white and also kind of blue a little bit in the subsurface levels kind of makes it feel more realistic. And again, we can adjust the scale. So let me reduce that a bit. Now, like other materials on the list, I think it probably works better using the UV coordinates. But again, if you want to go procedural, you can plug in object or generated. I kind of just see what results it comes up with. But I think it's a pretty good one to have around if you don't have access to any kind of snow like materials by yourself and i think it looks quite nice but it also looks like coconut in a way but do you know what i mean like have you ever had those candies or sweets kind of covered in coconut powder i feel like this would also double up as a good use case for that meta edit okay this is very weird i'm actually editing the thumbnail for this video and i realized i forgot to talk about the rainbow metal shader <gasps> oh my god there's a whole other thing i forgot to talk about so this one comes from marton and i think i'll put their instagram on the screen as well now the reason i forgot to talk about this in the actual recording was because this one was added before all the other things that were added to the update now i really like this shader we've had a bit of a debate in the discord server about the correct type of metal that it should be called so we've just called it rainbow metal because it seems quite appropriate with like the kind of color distribution 
distribution. But it's a super, super nice procedural material, which tends to work on like every type of shape you can put it on. So I think it's really cool. And you've got like all this control for different procedural scratches. Let me just move out the geometry there. You've got like bump, roughness, AO, scratches, scale, of course. Um, so yeah, I just thought that I shouldn't upload the video without mentioning it because it would have like fallen down a crack of kind of being too early for like the other updates, but too late to be mentioned in a video. So yeah, this is a really cool one that's been added as well. So thank you, Martin, for that. I will now need to do a very, very quick edit on the video to uh, fit this in. And before we close this up, we have one very simple material to add. And this is my plastic wall material. So just to explain this one, because it is a remarkably simple material here. It's just a noise texture and a color ramp. But these specific values, this specific balance is something I've been using in my interior artworks. And it's literally just a way of making a glossy flat surface look like it has some texture. Just something where if you rubbed your fingers down it, you would catch something on the surface. I'll show you a demonstration here in my Edge Vibes artwork. But you can see it looks quite nice as like the light kind of reflects off. It looks much better than just having like nothing on the surface. See if I unplug the bump here, it's just a flat, simple, glossy surface. So it's just a really simple, but still powerful technique used in the right conditions to give this kind of manufactured surface look. So I've added that one there as well. And again, for a lot of the pre-existing materials in the pack, uh, they have also been been made into node groups as well so they're not just loose nodes anymore for now they have not been marked as assets so they don't appear in the asset browser and that's just to keep it clean so when you're actually adding this blend file to your own asset library it doesn't clutter with all of the node groups but i might actually mark them as assets in the future let me know if you think that'd be useful because then you'd just be able to drag them into your blend files but i figured since it's just a material pack it's just supposed to focus on the materials i don't know let me know what you think so anyway yeah feel free to go and download it uh, that's the Community Material Pack version free. You can grab it on Gumroad and Blender Market. And if you want to support more projects like this, then feel free to sign up to my Patreon. We can put your name put permanently on this piece of evolving artwork. But also while you're on the channel, maybe feel free to check out some of our other videos. I've just released a really cool one about different types of modeling methods in Blender, kind of going over different techniques. So if you feel like you're stuck with regular poly modeling, there are a few other alternative methods you could try your hand at to kind of speed up your process of concepting models. And also if you want to get your hands on more resources, whether free or paid, because I have some premium resources you can check out my store at codisold.online slash store so if you made it to the end of this video the emoji i want you to put in the comments is a party face that will show who made it this far i've just noticed a spelling mistake on the screen how embarrassing anyway thanks for watching everyone stay safe and i will see you next time